Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Massachusetts NBA Field. This night's cap contest between the home team, Lynn Crasco Rams, and the visiting Brockton High Boxes. Head coach of the Rams, Brian Vaughn. Rams will receive the kick. And I now ask that you please all rise and remove your caps while the Lynn Public School Marching Band performs our national anthem tonight. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Manning Field in Lynn, Massachusetts, home of the Lynn Classical Rams. And tonight, the boxers of Brockton High School look to move their so far undefeated season forward against the Rams. 
Brockton, of course, beating Duxbury 27-14 last week at Marciano Stadium. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Be Mad Brian Madden in Lynn, Massachusetts. Quite the long ride for the boxers to come up here, Brian. We'll see if that nice little traffic jam coming through Boston, uh, Boston affects the boxers in any way. I'm sure it won't. This is not their first rodeo. Um, they've, you know, traveled as far as New Hampshire and over, you know, all throughout the state. So they'll be fine. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to an exciting game. I heard that um, Lynn, the Rams got destroyed last last week, and uh, I don't know what the score was. No one was able to tell me that, but it should be an interesting game. Brockton winning the opening coin toss, electing to defer. The boxers wearing their visiting white jerseys, black trim around the maroon numbers. The Rams in their home green jerseys, white pants, and gold trim around the white numbers. The opening kick falling at the 16-yard line. A nice return all the way up to the 36-yard line. That was number five, five Kyle, on the carry. Kyle Durant. Yes. The sophomore wideout, 5'7", a buck 60. Similar measurements to the starting quarterback of the Brockton Boxers, Devante Medley, who weighs in at 5'8", and a buck 65. But we are looking at number two, Daniel Gisano, the senior 6'2", buck 80. Four wide to start the game for the Rams. Gisano in the gun. Screen pass, complete to number 12. He's got some room to run, and being yanked down, did he get out of bounds? He is pushed out of bounds by number 11 of the boxers, Navon Reed. And on that screen pass reception was Brandon Summers. Yeah, Brandon Stone. That was a great run by Brandon. I mean, uh, Gisano hit him out in the, in the flat. Oh, and they're doing a hurry up. Trips to the far side. Snap, and it's a handoff this time. And a gain of a couple, we'll call it three, to number 23, Calvin So. Yeah, right now, they're, they're working in a hurry-up offense. They're not trying to give Rockton any time to um, get their defense and, and Quarter ready. Quarterback keeper for Gisano. He's got room. He's got one man to beat. Tackled by the shoestrings at the six-yard line. A touchdown-saving tackle by... Number 20. Number 20 of the boxes. That is Gershon Souffron. Great stop by Gershon. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad place for a timeout. Slow them down a little bit. Trips to the far side. The give and brought down immediately is so. So Calvin So, two short gains on two carries so far. Yeah, this Brockton's uh, defense is going to get tested today. If they continue with this pace. You know, three wide out set to give to So right up the middle. Touchdown Rams. A very quick drive. One minute and 31 seconds it took the Marshfield, uh, Marshfield, the Lynn Classical Rams to get all the way up the field and punch it in. Yes, yes. And they had two um, long drives. Uh, I mean, two long uh, runs, two long plays, you know, of um, about 20 yards, so. They ate up that field quickly. Uh, they need the T for the extra point. Number five to attempt. That is Kyle Durant, who returned the opening kickoff. No dedicated kicker on this Rams roster. The kick is up. And the kick is good. 7 nothing. The Rams leading the boxers. One minute and 32 seconds into the first quarter here at Manning Field. That was fast. That was real fast, man. Blistering pace so far set by the Lynn Classical Rams. I was going to say Marshfield again. <laughs> The same exact colors as, as Marshfield, but yeah, the other side did. of the state. Four 
four returners right. deep for the boxers. Well, you know, the boxers had to play uh, catch up from last game. You know, they uh, started out with a deficit and they were able to uh, come away with a victory. The kickoff, a low kick, falling at the 21 and bobbled by the boxers and it's going to fall out of play at the six yard line and because that touched a boxer that I believe is where Devontae Medley is going to start. Yeah, Meek Watterson. Um, Waterman, Watterson wasn't able to collect that ball. Skipped on past him. Fortunately it went out of bounds at the six. Or the seven. So first and 10 for the boxers offense, talking to offensive coordinator Matt Cunningham before this game. In the past, we've either seen a very pass heavy or a very run heavy, but this year he said the boxers are gonna be more 50-50 and that's the game plan tonight. Five receivers in a clean backfield, a man in motion. Rather, it's a quarterback keeper for Medley and he's got a gain of about four. And if he would have handed that off to Water, Water, Watersons, he was going to be tackled in the backfield. Mick Waterson so having, excuse me, a, a great week last week. Two touchdowns on a buck 23 on the ground. Add that to 20 yards through the air. And Mick Waterson was the player that was the difference maker in the boxers win last week against Duxbury. Medley, quarterback keeper up the middle, brought down. Might have lost the ball, at least for a moment. And it looked like it was a broken play. And uh, the Rams converged quickly. It's going to be third and about six to go for the boxers who have not attempted a pass thus far. Medley had a great game last week as well. Three touchdowns for Amik Watterson at Marciano Stadium last week. Four wideouts, trips to the far side, Medley in the gun. Back to pass, looking towards the sideline, he's going to overthrow his man. And that'll bring up a fourth and six deep in their own territory of the Brockton Boxers. He attempted to get that to Navon Reed, but um, that was uncatchable. Threw it right up out of bounds. Not often, Brian, that the boxers have the chance to play in a stadium quite like this. Comparable to ours. Um, it's a very nice facility they have here. High end over end kick, but short, falling at the 35 and getting in the way of what would have been a very boxer friendly bounce was number 21. Adrian Fillet. Uh, That's a mental error by Fillet. That probably would have gone another 10 yards on the bounce. I hope it's Fillet. Could be Fillet, yay. I don't know. We went with Fillet last year for, <laughs> I believe, his older brother, and we didn't hear anything about it, so. Okay. <laughs> and folks, please, if you're watching this and we make a mistake, come up to us at the next game against Natick at Marciano Stadium and correct us. And let us because know. Because we don't want to butcher names. Yeah. But Miles and I were butchering names for a long time, long, back when you were still in school. <laughs> that wasn't too, too long ago. Actually, I had one of well, the... It's been uh, 10 years since I've commentated. It's been eight since I've graduated high school. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, I'm getting when old. I was, oh, please stop it. <laughs> I had a one of the hockey players. Yes. A four-year starter for the boxer hockey team, Nathan L. Shammy, and I was calling him L. Shammy <laughs> for ooh, three ooh. full years. Wide open, number five, touchdown Rams. You talk about quick drives. Wow. And they're just. Killing the boxers on the pace now. Wow. That is Kyle Durant, the sophomore wideout, kick returner, place kicker. He's doing it all for the Rams. Oh, kind of like um, 
what was his name last week? The kid that they Proudy. Like, Proudy. Will Proudy yeah. for the he Duxbury Dragons. So I had Nathan L. Shammy come up to me at a football game at Durfee High School and say, Hey, are you Mad Dog Matt Nelson? It's like, yes. Who are you? You've been mispronouncing my name for three years. So why didn't you come up to me three years ago? <laughs> the kick is up and good. 14 nothing. Only a short three and a half minutes into wow. this first quarter. Well, I tell you what, Brockton better make some adjustments. Um, well, I mean, they, they're getting ready to have a kickoff, so they should have good field position if uh, if they're able to collect the ball. I don't know if they do another squib kick they, like they did that last one. We'll see what happens. And who is it? It's Kyle Durant, the sophomore wideout, place kicker, kick returner. He's a little guy, too. This one, a line drive caught cleanly by Watterson. Now he's going to pitch it, or keep it himself. It looked like a pitch, and Watterson's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. A lot better starting field position for the boxers this time, maybe a little bit more room to move around yes yes because when you're playing from your end zone you really have to be very careful to protect the ball and not do anything um reckless and with the amount of uh, turnovers they had last week they have to be very very careful as far tons as tons of turnovers season. six in the first six half in the first half and still won the game and as you mentioned the rams getting blown out last week 42 to 12 against catholic memorial there you go That game was in West Roxbury. Now Amik Watterson picks up the loose ball and turning this into a nice game. Amik Watterson with a clear field in front of him. And the boxers are able to answer the 10, the 5, touchdown boxers. <laughs> a broken play. Ball on the ground. He's able to pick the ball up, reverse direction, cut through the defense, break through, and then just run it in for an easy touchdown. Fantastic run by Watterson. And that is the prowess of the, of the senior boxes. running back, originally from Tennessee, moving up before the start of last season. This kick is blocked. I think it was tipped at the line. No good. So 14 to 6, your score, 8 minutes even in what could turn into a punch out here at the Manning Bowl. But what a run, I'm gonna go back to that one more time. Uh, we don't have replay right here, but that was uh, pretty good. I mean, he dropped the ball on the handoff, picked it up, reverse field, and then went back up through the defense. When he got to about the 40 yard line, he was clear sailing. Easy run into the end zone. A 65-yard run for Amik Watterson. Now a squib kick is going to be falling upon at the 40-yard line. Now hopefully the Brockton can regroup defensively and uh, slow the Rams down. Because they had two very quick scores. Like you said, one in, in less than two minutes and then the other one in less than a minute.
play stopped at the 44-yard line. Stopped by numerous Brockton players. I saw around Navon Reed in on attack as well as Devin Forts. Nice run by uh, was that twenty three? Yeah, so keeper, quarterback keeper. Gain of about four yards as there's a little scrum that built up at the end of that play. <laughs> Kyle Durant, 5'8", 160 pounds. He was having none of that. He got pushed by somebody. And uh, he's like, oh, look, don't let my size fool you. We can go. Did I do believe I've been kind of quiet for the last minute, minute and a half. I was scanning the roster. Brockton has cut their kicker from last week. Really? Would be number 96. Unless he changed numbers, which is very possible. Well, I scanned for the last name, too. I believe it was was Tooker. All right, I'll tell you who it was. Let's see. No, wasn't it Baptista? It was A. Baptista. 87, McCarthy. 87. Kevin McCarthy is on the roster, listed as a punter and defensive lineman. 6'2", 230. Well, he's the, he's the one that... Um, Made two punts, 77 yards, average of 38 and a half, 38.5. His longest was 44. So he's still there. Oh, through the hole, and he's gone. And he's off. That's another touchdown for the quarterback, Daniel Gersano. And that was about a 20. Seven yard run. Five twenty eight to go, and already four touchdowns in the first quarter. High scoring game is going to be with. I think they have, you know, they're in their feelings a little bit from last week. And Brockton's on a re receiving end to this. But um, long way to go. A lot of time remaining. A timeout called on the extra point attempt. Sano, the senior quarterback of the Rams. Big guy, but fast, 6'2", and a very lean 180. The extra point attempt is up, and it's good. Three for three on those is Kyle Durant. Well, this is interesting. I was expecting a, an exciting and eventful game, but I wasn't expecting the boxes to be down 21 to 6. So quickly. Only two drives in for the boxers. One was a three and out. And the other resulted in a 65-yard touchdown run for Meek Watterson.
This one taken by Watterson, who was on one knee, so he declared himself down. And he looked like he was ready to lower his shoulder and just... Yeah, he wanted to make another run like his last one. He looked like he wanted to just run the marathon all the way upfield. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the um, rule changes um, that, brought, that the uh, MIAA has put into effect. First of all, it's about time they did something with the playoff format. Yes. But I'll, I'll speak on that after this play. Oh, when there's a lull in the action. Maybe the timeout. Watterson, the man in motion. He gets the screen pass. He's got a little bit of a hole and able to get up to the 23-yard line is Amik Watterson. And I want to get your thoughts on the latest scandal in high school sports. Okay. Trips to the near side. That's coming up in a little bit. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Medley lofts one up, looking for Reed, and did he get it in bounds? It's yes, he did at the 50-yard line. Navon Reed with a great sideline catch. Yeah, that was a nice throw. He just lofted it up there with Navon's height. He was I able to um, just turn his body and bring that in easily. I didn't think he was going to get... A foot in bounds as he was kind of spinning on the sideline to turn around and find it. Now Medley pitches it out to Watterson, trying to turn the corner on the far side. Amik Watterson's got some room. Breaking tackles left and right. He's got to hold on to the ball. His forward progress is going to be stopped. At, at the, the 39. 30, yeah, the 30 looks like four is where they're going to spot it. Oh, yeah, 34. Looking at the wrong half. Hurry up offense here for the boxers. Trips to the far side. Medley in the gun. Amik Watterson to his left. 420 left in the first quarter. Good drive coming together for the boxers. Looking for the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, boxers. Let's see if we can get a number on that. I got it. Hold on. Number 16. That's Isaiah Laguerre, the big wide out. For the Brockton Boxers, the younger cousin of all-world athlete Vanessa Clairvaux. And he was defended by um, Gelasso. Uh, okay. Oh, something. <laughs> <laughs> Ola Deji yeah, Gelasso. Go. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we got a timeout call by the Brockton Boxers. The latest scandal in high school sports coming to you from Weymouth High School. The booster club of the ladies' soccer team wanted to sell Wildcat whiteout shirts. Are you familiar with what a, what a fan whiteout is? All the, oh, all the fans wear white t-shirts, yeah. uh, get into the opponent's head, yeah. come together, you know, that sort of thing. The superintendent deemed that term whiteout to be racist. Hmm. Interesting. So um, he pulled the fundraiser. It said, words matter. She sent a letter to all parents. It says, words matter and the term whiteout is racist. So my immediate thoughts, what happens in a blizzard? Are, are meteorologists it? not allowed to say there's whiteout conditions on, on 93? Well, you know, I think that in today's climate, politically, with um, you know the divisiveness that's that's going on in in America today, a broken um, two-point attempt for Meek Watterson is not converted. But racial tension is at, at an all-time high, and unfortunately, something so I don't know. Something like that could be misconstrued as as racist. I don't see it myself personally, and, and the, I'm African American. If, if there was a student that complained about it, I get it. I fully understand if somebody went up to the principal or the superintendent and said, I'm offended by this term. The letter did not say anything to that effect, and the superintendent has turtled and gone into hiding, and she's refusing to speak to 
any media to defend her position on this. As here's the return by Durant. He is brought down at the 29-yard line. But if she said in her letter a student complained or, you know, some have been offended by this, I fully understand. But if you look at the whiteouts in, in air quotes that have happened in the last couple of years, the Miami Heat, perhaps the most famous one, yeah. the Winnipeg Jets of the NHL, the Arizona Coyotes do it for all their playoff games. And where's the line? I was listening to uh, the radio last night, and the, the host of the show I was listening to said, are the Chicago White Sox, do they have to change their name? Hey, Vaughn. A screen pass is going to fall incomplete. That is the first incomplete pass, or the first play that has not gone for a positive gain for the Rams so far this game with 3.54 to go in the first quarter. And Reed broke through the line and uh, was able to deflect that ball quickly. Looks like the defensive box boxes has settled down. A good stop there good after stop. a gain yeah. of about four for the running back. That is Calvin So, And on the other side, because I like to play both sides of the argument, parents are calling for the superintendent's job because they think she is creating a climate of way too political correctness. You know, I, I think it's ridiculous with the amount of situations where someone or where a group of people, oh, balls on the ground. Still on the ground. Whistle's no, no, blowing no, all whistle over blew, the place. I think. Whistle blew immediately. I mean, it was on the ground. I don't know why he blew the whistle when it clearly was a, a fumble. Oh, they called it a legal procedure. False start. First penalty called in this game. Okay, so the... The, uh, the hike was neutralized once they blew the whistle. It was a golden opportunity for the Boxers' defense. It's a third and ten for the Lynn Classical Rams. Four wideouts. Gisano in the gun, so to his right. And the coach is ten yards on the field. Gisano to pass wide open is number 12. That is Brandon Summers. He is brought down at the 34-yard line. Very nice tackle there by, is that number Johnny 25? Horn. Johnny Horn. Nice stop. Nice defensive stop, and, and the boxers needed that. They needed to make a, 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 a statement with um, the ease the Rams were scoring touchdowns. We'll see if the Rams try to fake something here on fourth and a long four. We'll call it five. A Johnny Horn back to return the punt. A running start and only about a 15-yard kick. Bouncing at the 48-yard line and going out of bounds. Yeah, that, was, that was more like a free kick than it was a, a punt. <laughs> he had a running head start into that. Yeah. He probably ran yeah. ahead five yards with the ball in his hand before and he kicked then that. Kicked it and he might have been thinking and about the it. fake. And, I think and he was thinking about yeah. the fake and, and, and thought and, the uh, better of it. Thought the better of it. He definitely <laughs> would have got got smushed at about the forty. Well, first and ten from the fifty yard line for the Brockton Boxers. Well, real quick, I want to just interject here where you were saying that um, they want the superintendent which, fired, which I don't think that's the. I think she makes us. Everybody makes mistakes. And but everybody's so quick to say, "Oh, I want their job." You know, they need to be fired for for um, infractions. Now, depending on what the infraction is, oh no! Oh, that could have been bad. Are they saying that that's a lateral? So that it's was a, a lateral. It's a fumble, and the Brockton receiver picked it up and got to the first down marker. It was definitely a lateral. An excellent recovery. I think that was number 55 that picked that one up. That's uh, Noah Arsenal. And, and that's a heck of a recovery. And that goes back to one of the big problems with the Boxers' offense last week, Brian, was that Devontae Medley 
hesitates when he's handing the ball off. And I think he didn't expect to have that ball in his hand as he was getting and closed upon by the Rams. Now back to pass. Looking wide open. Over the middle. Wide open. And racing towards the end zone is number 13. Trey. Trey Shua, Shua Hall. Hall. The senior wideout, 6'1", 215. And the boxers answer. And this one, Brian, might turn into a haymaker for haymaker. 15-round <laughs> type of matchup. One fifteen to go in the first quarter. It is twenty-one to eighteen for the moment. The extra point attempt coming from the Brockton Boxers. Six touchdowns in one quarter. Yes, but the Boxers are not able, haven't been able to capitalize or, or convert on an extra point. They they should go for two. Which they are. They are doing just that. Four wideouts. Amik Watterson to Devontae Medley's right. The man in motion is Isaiah Laguerre. Medley looking for Laguerre, and he's going to have his pass swatted away by number 22, Marquise Sequeira. And, and Navon was wide open in the, in the back of the end zone, but Medley was on his bike trying to... Uh, find some open space to get that ball off. Well, we're back to um, what I was talking about uh, with the um, notable changes. Speaking about last week. Now, the notable changes include moving to 12-minute quarters, with um, three timeouts per half, using a 40-second and a 25-second play clock. All the ball's off. That might have come out. There's a pile and... Some laundry on the field. So that, of course, differs. It went by division last year. We saw... 11-minute quarters in some games, 12-minute quarters in others, 10 minutes in, I believe, one of them. So that was all over. The, so that's been standardized. That's now 12-minute quarters in all matchups. It's going to be a penalty for a low block against the Lynn Classical Rams, and that'll back their start up yeah, 10 but, yards. But they're also using the wider hash marks. We can see that the hash marks were moved out. It doesn't look like they moved theirs out yet. Their hash marks still look like they're on the interior. And that's definitely something we noticed last week because the old hash marks were still, were still visible. visible. First and 10 for the Rams deep in their own territory at the 17-yard line. The handoff is good for a gain of... A yard, second and nine with under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Nice tackle there by um, Lima, Rodrigo. So 12-minute quarters, the boxers have to get used to that because the big three last year was 11-minute quarters, so it's that much more time. Now 35 seconds to go and counting in the first quarter. Trips to the far side. Back to pass and a quick dump off falls incomplete. In a lot of trouble was Daniel Gisano. Yeah, because he had uh, four boxes converging on him quickly. And in the front was um, 73, Jose DePina. So he had to get that ball off. And Jose's pretty tall. Jose Depina, uh, 6'2", 250. Gisano back to pass. He's going to be wrapped up and sacked. He broke the initial tackle with a boxer arm around his head, and then it was brought down at the 11-yard line. That is a huge stop for the boxers. That brings up a fourth and long, about 15 to go for the Rams with 9.5 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, I think it was Safrant who got there first and then followed up by Gio Brown who cleaned up and uh, 
took him down. So we got to play it down. Got to play it down over there. Ran the, way down the, at the 47-yard line. Yeah, close to that. His helmet is off. He could have a cramp or something in his leg. Just stretching him out. Looks like it is yeah. just at his left leg. So while he gets to the Rams sideline, Brian, we mentioned expanded to 12-minute quarters across the board every Yes, Team yes. every division has 12-minute quarters. And all kicks that... Oh, this is the kicker. Huh. Play on words. But I'm... Oh. <laughs> Hold on. After this play. Fourth down, the Rams lining up to punt from their own. It'll be about their five-yard line. And another running start. This one a much better low-line drive type of kick. And out of play at the 46-yard line. As time expires on the first quarter... A slugfest shaping up here in Lynn, Massachusetts at the Manning Bowl. 21-18, to 18, your score. A lot of scoring early, Brian. Quite yes. the opposite of last week, that it was a defensive battle and a struggle to get first downs. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. But right now, it's just, uh, you know, whoever has the ball. But, you know, that was a good defensive. Two defensive stops by Brockton um, to stop those drives. Great job. They need to keep that up. But last week, we saw on replay, we saw it live, and we also saw on replay where the ball was should have been called a touchback because it went into the end zone, and it was thrown out of the end zone by the um, kicking team. The referee that was in the end zone called it a touchback. They had a meeting with the other judges, the white cap and the other one disputed the call, and they weren't even in the end zone, and uh, it was reversed. And they gave him the ball at the um, uh, two-yard line. But it says here, all kicks that enter the end zone are immediately ruled a touchback, including field goal attempts from beyond the 20 yards. That was not enforced last week. All right, and that's that. But, um... Defensive pass interference can be called on a pass that may be deemed uncatchable. Intentional grounding can be called if the quarterback exits the pocket and does not throw the ball in the area of an eligible receiver. So that's a big change because yes. now you have to have a receiver within about 10 yards either way. As Medley's scrambling, speaking of outside the tackle box, he's brought down after a gain of about three and a half, we'll call it four yards, second and six. Yeah, taken down hard, too, by uh, number 12. Brandon Summers. Oh, oh. and, and the, the last thing is teams are allowed to use in-game video replay for sideline instructions, which that we, saw, we that, saw, last saw last week. week Duxbury, Duxbury had quite the setup. They had cameras on giant poles behind each end zone and then one uh, on the 50-yard line in the press box at Marziano Stadium. And that's a broken play. Devontae Medley has got to get rid of that hesitation. He, I, I don't know what it is. He, he goes to hand the ball off and then just refuses to let go. <laughs> I don't know if he's got pine tar or stick them on his hands. I don't and he know, just, whatever it is, got to wash his hands. <laughs> Put some, some Vaseline or something on there, you know, loosen those hands up so that he can release the ball. Now, it's one thing to, you know, do the option – Fake the handoff, keep it, and then keep it moving. But there's but some just, designed handoffs where you just got to let, let it, it go. go. Trips to the far side, medley in the gun, back to pass. He's in trouble. He gets crushed as he throws, and it's going to fall incomplete. I believe Nave Von Reed was the closest receiver to that, but not remotely close. Well, it looked like miscommunication because Nave Von went down and turned in field and, and he threw it like it was a post out on the on the other side towards the um sideline. So the the quarterback rule that has changed the intentional grounding rule I think that might be the most interesting to me because that has been used as a tactic that if you're in trouble you just scramble outside the tackle box and throw it away. No problem. 
But now you have to throw it in the direction of a player. And I think receiver. the interception numbers are going to be much higher this year across the board because of that. Or there'll be, um, you know, laundry on the field. Now, there, there could be some um, situations where it's a judgment call, and it's going to be the judgment of the referee because they're going to have to make the decision whether or not there's a receiver in the area. I mean, is there a specific amount of yardage? Or is it a judgment call? Very interesting rule changes by the MIAA. Number 23 on the carry for the Rams, Kelvin So. He's got a first down. Four wide for the Rams. Jasano in the gun. Looked like a false start. No flag thrown. This one's going to fall incomplete. Intended for number 22, Maurice Sequeira. Second and ten for the Rams from their own 21-yard line. Quarterback, Quarterback keeper. Keeper for Jasano. He's got a first down all the way up to the 34. And he's sneaky quick. <laughs> yes, he is. Power set fullback in play for the Rams. They give to Calvin So. He's stacked up at the 35-yard line and brought down. That'll be a gain of about three yards. Second and seven. A key would not he. He swallowed him up quickly. Held him to just a short gain. Screen pass wide open on the far side and room to run. Now he's brought down at the 46-yard line. First down for the Rams. Taken down by the linebacking core. Number six on that reception. Esebio Quintana. These names never get any easier. No. What happened to... Um Paul Smith. Quarterback keeper for Gisano up the middle. Breaking a tackle. Jumping back. What ability to just stop on a dime and, and move sideways. Yeah, he's pretty quick. Pretty nifty. This has been an interesting game so far. But the boxers are going to have to score extra points. Because of the uh, mixed extra points. <laughs> A missed kick, two missed two-point conversions. Screen pass complete. And it's enough for first down for the Rams. That is Quintana on the far sideline. Brought down by Navon Reed, who is working both sides tonight for the Boxers. 7.23 to go in the first half. 21-18 your score when Classical on top of the Brockton Boxers. The man in motion gets the pitch and brought down at the 30-yard line. That was Eusebio Quintana. And we have an injured boxer at the 40-yard line. 
looks like it was a clipping or something. He hit him on his ankle, and he's in pain, a lot of pain down there. The left ankle that is being clutched. And that's number 73, Jose DePina. DePina was the one that got the sack on Gisano towards the end of that first quarter. And he's in a there, lot of pain. There is a flag down at the 37-yard line. Yeah, because it was a bad, bad hit. Receiving some words of encouragement from his teammate. Over there trying to um, help him up. Fantastic by number uh, 96, Raymond Bento. Go over there and help his, his comrade. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, the kicker for the boxers. Over there as well. And we hope that it's uh, nothing serious. Right now he's not putting any pressure on it. But, you know, we've all had those, those injuries. So they backed him up. It looked like it could have been a, uh, a helmet or a shoulder pad right to the, the Achilles. The ball is on the ground. And... Declaring himself down was Gisano. Which he's fortunate because when he threw that ball back, it looked like it was picked up by a boxer. 6.20 to go. It is second and a lot. 24 yards to go for the first down for the Rams. Trips to the far side. Calvin so to Gisano's right. He'll get the handoff. And he'll be brought down after a gain of about five yards. It'll be a third and about 20 to go. Yeah, Gio Brown took him down quickly. Didn't give him a chance to uh, dance his way through the defense. Screen pass and brought ooh, down ooh, immediately. Ooh. What a nice tackle around the shoulder pads. That was nice. That was Quintana on the reception, and he's shaken up quite a bit. And a Johnny Horn. I mean, he, he was there. He wrapped himself he around was, the shoulder pads. He, he was there perfect timing. He got there just a fraction of a second behind the ball getting to the receiver and just took him down. Looked like a, a WWE move. A loss of two on the play. Fourth and 22 for the Rams who are going to call a timeout here with 4.53 to go in the second quarter. 21 to 18 the score. The Rams on top. The Boxers are looking to get the ball back in decent field position. And this is when we wish we were playing at home. Because at home, we'd have all our toys and bells and whistles and instant replay, and we'd see those plays over again. But that was a fantastic uh, tackle by Johnny. Johnny Horn, two tackles and two assists last week against Duxbury. Yep, for a total of four. I was just looking that up myself. This punter does not like just straight punting it away. We so little. This one went out of bounds at the 27-yard line. He's running to the outside away from all his blockers at full speed and then just kind of pooching it. And, and the reason being because 
he's a little guy. And there's nothing wrong with being little. No offense. Don't take it. <laughs> but I, I don't see him having the power, you know, because he's, he's, you know, um, tiny um, in stature as well. So he, he wouldn't have the power to be able to boot it and, you know, get some real yardage out of it. So he tries to get a running start to give himself and a little bit more leeway. To try and get it out of bounds as Devontae Medley throws it long towards the sideline looking for Reed. It's overthrown a little bit and Reed jumping over the bench on the far sideline. Second and ten for the boxers, 4.37 to go in the second quarter. Looking to perhaps go into the second half with the lead. The boxers will have possession to open the second half. Well, let me rephrase that. Because last week, the boxers... Let's see. Do you remember, Brian, if the boxers had the opening kickoff or they were going to have the opening kickoff to start the second half and they re-flipped the coin yeah. at halftime. That was something I've never seen before. I've only seen it once and the situation was as follows. I forget who the opponent was but they never said the words we defer the opening kickoff. So so Brockton got the ball to start the game, and because they never deferred officially, Brockton got the ball as visitors to start the second half as well. Hmm. Yeah, I would uh, kind of fight that or complain about that if but I if was the opponent. But if you win the toss... Yeah, you have the option. You have the option. And instead of saying, we defer or we'd like to receive, they said, we want to defend this end zone... And kicked the ball away, and then because they never deferred, Brockton got the Both. opening kickoff to the second half. Medley in the gun, back to pass. He's got Watterson wide open, and he's going to throw it low as he was being wrapped up by big number 73 on the Rams. Orlando Concepcion Saldana. And he is a big boy, the offensive guard. 6'2", 310. Yeah. That's a big boy. Four twenty eight to go in the first half, third and ten now for the boxers. Trips to the far side. Five wide for the boxers. Medley in a clean backfield. Splitting to the outside. Flags thrown. It's going to be, I believe, holding against the boxers. Which I'm sure the penalty will be declined. Seeing they did not make enough yardage to get the first down. Well, they're going to back them up. A lot of discussion here between the refs and the Lynn Classical head coach. Brian Vaughn trying to determine what to no, do. No, he's backing him up. He says back him up, replay third down. Yeah. So be he's third and 15. Which really is a very smart move. I mean, because it would have been not turnover on downs, but it would have been fourth and four. And now it backs them up even further if they're not right, able well, to. Well, they're going all the way back. That's. No, he went back 10 yards. Not a, it looks like a 12 yard penalty. The line of scrimmage is the 14-yard line, and the line to it, gain it, it is It may the be 36. because of the reception. Yeah, it might have went back 15 yards. 
from from the spot of the catch. Five wide, low snap for Medley. He handles it, throws it high. Rainbow pass towards the sideline. Did he it get good? it? No, they're calling him out of bounds. He made the catch, but looks That's like Navon he... That's Reed on the far sideline. And that, that play almost bit him in the butt. Because had he uh, threw it in the playing field, Navon would have went up and got it. Not a punt from their own three-yard line. Falling at the 45, handled cleanly, and swallowed up was number five, Kyle Durant. Oh, and that's the kicker, and he's limping. Well, that's interesting. He's favoring his left leg. Well, who is their backup kicker if he's the kicker? If he's the starting kicker. Still a quick scan of the roster here. Well, he wasn't listed as a kicker. He was listed as a wide receiver and a cornerback. There is no kicker listed on the roster that was provided to us. And that includes Kyle Durant. That's what I just said. Yep, exactly. Looks like they got a first down on that um on that first that first play. Three twenty to go in the first half, second and one. One to go for the Rams. Four wide, two split to each side. Jasano in the gun. Gonna take his time back up a little bit. Plenty of time on the 40-second play clock. Switching sides is Calvin So. Screen pass complete to number 10. He's brought down at the 25. That's Jeffrey Hill. That was a nice re redirection. By moving So to the left side. Got in the psyche of the boxes that they're going to do a running play. Quarterback keeper for Jasano. He's got room. And he's brought down now at the 14-yard line. The quick acceleration from Jasano definitely affecting the boxer so far. It'll be second and one to go for the Rams. Four wide. Kelvin So splits out to the far side now. Complete to number 22. He's brought down at the nine yard line. Luis Sequeira on the reception. And Sequeira is a big boy in his own right. 6'3, 216. It's going to be something in the water up here in Lynn. Trips to the far Balls side. The, the ball's out. And swallowed up by five boxers is Jasano. So that's been something that we've seen a couple of times so far. The center has snapped the ball very low out of the reach of Daniel Jasano. Yeah, been at least three times that um, it's been a bad snap. Second and goal from the 15-yard line. It's the jumbo set going in. The fullback lined up to Jasano's right. The snap, the screen pass complete. And able to break the tackle, and it's a touchdown Rams. And who was it, 73? It was Jose De Pina, who's back in the, in the game after his injury. Speaking of injuries, celebrating that touchdown on the sideline 
was number 10, Jeffrey Hill, who jumped up to celebrate. And hurt his leg? And he hurt his left leg yeah, on the landing. <laughs> it's not funny. This kick it's is blocked. blocked. Way to get in there, boxes. Makes it a nine-point ball game, 27 to 18, with 57 ticks to go here in the first half. It's been an exciting game so far. Well, you never like to see an injury. No. But if somebody's celebrating in such a way that they can risk an injury, it's kind of comic irony. Yeah, where is he now? Number oh, he's 10 over there. on the side. I line. see him. He's over there. He's all right. Drinking some water over by the bench. Brings me back to one of my all time favorite experiences. Mike the Postman Simmons was there. We're at Gillette Stadium. It's the Patriots against the Bears. In Albert Louis Jean's return home, he was playing cornerback for the Bears. And the only reason Albert went into the game is here's a nice return for the boxers all the way up to the 45-yard line. The ball might have come out at the very end, but I think the boxers fell on it. There's a scrum and multiple flags thrown and laundry Whoa. all over the field. Whoa. And the Rams... Abandoned ship on the boxer sideline. If the refs try to sort out. I think what will come out of this is offsetting. Hopefully. Because there's one boxer that was chirping out there. Josiah Asari. He was out there continuing to yell across the field. After um, players started to separate and go to their respective benches. Well, they sort this one out. So we're, we're at Gillette Stadium. Albert Louis Jean comes, I want to say, it was mid-third quarter. And the reason Albert Louis Jean came into the game was because the Patriots were leading by about 30 points. That was when the Bears weren't that good. Jay Cutler was their quarterback. And there was a cornerback blitz. And I believe the cornerback that blitzed name was Stephen Tullock. He sacks Tom Brady down by 30, and he jumps up, and on the landing, he tore his ACL. I remember that. So Albert comes into the game and proceeds to get torched by the greatest quarterback of all time. Yes, he did. And that, so you see it in the pros, so it's not a big deal if you, you, you celebrate in high school. At least get it out of your system now. Because if you're part of the 1% of high school athletes that make it to the NFL, you got to learn your lesson here. What I'll tell you, there's, there's been celebrations going on since going back to when the helmets were made of leather. And um, the likelihood of you tearing your ACL by jumping up, in the ground, jumping up and down are pretty minuscule. Hopefully that would be I don't know what it case. is. In the last maybe 10, 15 years, they say the game has gotten much safer to play. Medley scrambling out. He's going to keep it himself, and he's got a gain of about six. They say the game has gotten much safer. Concussion numbers are down, blah, blah, blah. But the targeting the head, the, the absence of that has led to a lot more targeting of the knees and the ankles and the numbers of torn ACLs has exploded. Medley back to pass. He's in trouble scrambling to the outside. He's going to take an arm across the chest and get knocked out of bounds. Oh, we remember when um, Welker tore his ACL in a non-contact play. He was just, you know, caught the ball and made a cut. And actually, no, he's on the ground. I think that has something to do with it, too. The, the players in the NFL 
are focusing a lot more on upper body strength so they can wrap and, and tackle. Hold on to the ball and, and you know, all that if you're a receiver or, or uh, a running back. Medley hands off to Watterson, brought down across the first down marker. 27.7 to go. Brockton's going to call a timeout. Trying to draw within one score. And who's on the ground? Uh, Watterson. Gronk uh, gave a news conference today, an interview. It might have been late yesterday. What the amount of um, concussions the, he received over the years? Quote, at least 20. At least 20. He remembers five blackout ones. Yes. He's had nine surgeries. Medley back to pass. Trips to the near side. Medley's got some room to run. He's up to the 25, to the 20. Cutting back inside is... Time ticking down, it's going to stop with 16 seconds, 15.8 to be exact on the clock. Brockton burns another timeout. And they could use a they could use some points here. They need six. Because the um, field goals is pretty unrealistic. If they can't kick extra points. I doubt very seriously they're going to kick a field goal from, um, you know, 30 yards or more. Procton has one timeout remaining. And Procton's rankings, they've... Uh, Jumped up five points. They were previously at 11. They are now six. And that's uh, big because this year the playoffs go by the rankings. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So as long as they're able to maintain, uh, you know, a winning percentage and keep their, um, their rankings up, in single digits or low double digits, they'll be all right. Right above Brockton in the Globe rankings is Everett, who we play in just a couple of weeks. Medley back to pass, looking towards the end zone. Caught, Whoa. touchdown. Boxers, what a catch. <laughs> that was Trey, Trey Shula Sh Hall. Shula Hall. And he was behind the defender, reached over. He reached over the, over the defender's defender head and grabbed, and the, ball grabbed the ball and ball. pulled it in because it looked like a sure interception. And uh, who's that, number 16? It's Isaiah even... Laguerre. No, 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 for, um, oh, for, for the Rams. The Rams, no, let's do it on our roster. He's not even on the roster. And but he, Aiden Dow is number he's, fifteen. He is over there still complaining to the to the uh, referee. Oh, it's number ten actually. No, it's number Waters ten. Waters to the man in motion on the end around give. He's brought down in the two point conversion. No good. So the defender was the kid who was celebrating and injured his leg on the sideline, and he just you know. How's that for irony? Off. Yeah, <laughs> but it was funny. I'm, I'm watching him over there complaining to the referee about um, the umpire, about the, uh, the play to no avail. So this is interesting. The boxers 0 for 4 on extra point attempts. 27 to 24, your score. That two point would have put Brockton within a point. There's 9.5 seconds on the clock. You know what? There's, there was a flag thrown. So the boxers are going to have a 
another attempt at the PAT. I wonder what, what they'll be working on this week or next week. <laughs> They're going extra points. clean wide receivers, quarterback keeper Medley. He you gets got pushed it. up ahead, and they get it. So the two-point conversion is good. Now, let me correct myself. One for four on the night. The box on extra point attempts. 27 to 26. It's a classic shootout here at the Manning Bowl. <laughs> Fantastic. And that was important. That was a good uh, drive there. And um, way to put some points up just before the half. That was huge. Bringing the... the yeah, the boxers get the one. ball back to start the second. Yes. Or so we think. We'll see if they reflip the coin at halftime again. The penalty, we're being told, was uh, 12 men on the field for the Rams. No wonder they got to Waterson so quick in the backfield. And it, it probably was because number 10 was still on the field complaining to the, to the, uh, to the official. Low kick, bouncing and bobbled a little bit at the 15-yard line. Now trying to turn the corner is that was number 22, I believe, on that grab, Marquise Sequeira. Yeah, the guy running the ball back was uh, Andrew Castro. 2.2 seconds on the clock. Brian, do you just take a knee and end it, or do you take a shot to the end zone? Four wideouts. Gisano in the gun. They're going to hand the ball off and see what comes of it to number 23, who breaks the tackle, and he's brought down. At the 37-yard line, that is Calvin So on the carry, and that brings the first half to an end. What an entertaining half of football. 27-26, to 26, your score. Lynn Classical on top. Brockton has the ball to start the second half. Brian, it's a shootout. It is a shootout. It's been exciting. Fun to watch. Um, hopefully, uh, the boxers have more rounds in the chamber than um, the Rams going into the second half. Well, it was a quiet second quarter for Amik Watterson, who opened up his night with a 65-yard touchdown run. That is the longest play of the game so far for the Brockton offense. They've got some work to do, Brian, especially Devontae Medley has to get better at letting the ball go once his running backs touch it. Yes, 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 because... We've seen time and time again where he just holds the ball too long. You know, if you're going to keep it, put it in the gut and pull it back and run. But don't put it in the gut and just stand there and wait until your the defenders come and tackle you. Well, we've got a halftime show to watch. It's the Lynn Classical Rams marching band 27-26. to 26. Your score at halftime, the Brockton Boxers doing an admirable effort to try to catch up to the Lynn Classical Rams, who at one point were up by three touchdowns. It's now a one-point ball game. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Good job, Manny.
two. Hello and welcome back to the Manning Bowl in Lynn, Massachusetts for second half action between your Brockton Boxers and the Lynn Classical High School Rams. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside B-Mad Brian Madden. It's a heavyweight 15-round battle. It's a one-point ball game, 27-26 year score coming into the second half. Amik Watterson receiving the opening kickoff to the second half and bringing it up to the 37-yard line for the Boxers. The Boxers were down by three touchdowns at one point, coming all the way back. To make this a one-point ball game, one for four on extra points, or the Boxers would have a nice lead. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just been uh, back and forth. It's been a slugfest, like you said earlier in the, in the game. And, um, you know, the boxers need to tighten up defensively. They did in the third quarter, I mean in the second quarter, but they need to continue to str be stringent in their uh, giving up yards. Four wide for the boxers. Devontae Medley handles the low snap, looking for Trey Shula Hall, and it's broken up by number 26. Nicholas Costa, the freshman linebacker. <laughs> Trips to the near side. Isaiah Laguerre, the lone wide to the far side. Screen pass, rather. It is to Laguerre that was on the near side. He lowers his head and has a gain of about eight. Yeah, he gained about eight, running over number eight. Ola Deji. Jil Jil Ola Deji. Yeah. Jilauso. Yeah, whatever you said. <laughs> it never gets easier. No, it doesn't. Can we have some... Some, you know, Bill. I mean, we got number number seventeen for the Rams, Sean Brown. There that's, we go. It's easy enough. A couple of those. Three wideouts and Brockton thinking about a run on second and three. Pitched I mean, Watterson. Watterson able to keep himself balanced enough to get a first down and a couple additional yards. Watterson looked like he was losing balance, put his hand on the ground and restabilized himself at least momentarily as he was able to gain about four yards after he lost balance. Yeah, threw himself forward. He was able to pick up that first down, which is important right now. Medley back to pass, in trouble. He gets leveled and able to turn what should have been a minus two play into a plus one. He got that out of his hand quickly. Got it over to, uh, I think it was Randy. Three wideouts as the Boxers have changed up their offensive look here to start the second half. Medley remaining in the shotgun. Back to pass, lofting it in. Ooh. It's almost picked off in and out of the hands of number six, Esebio Quintana, the senior wide receiver and cornerback. He had it in his hands. He, he thought hand. about <clears throat> running it back before he caught it. You got to make that catch. Especially because your primary position is wide receiver. And that would have been a huge turnover on um, turnover. Slow down Brockton's drive, momentum. Brockton able to score just before the end of the uh, first half. Five wide, Medley back to pass. He's in trouble. He's going to get wrapped up and throws it away in the general area of Isaiah Laguerre. So it'll be an incomplete pass. And that, that was risky. But um, that was a good attempt to get rid of the ball, and he threw it in the direction of a, of a receiver, so it wasn't uh, 
intentional ground or anything because it would have been a loss of about six or seven. The punt high end over end. Falling at about the 28-yard line, bouncing off of a boxer touchdown right at the 20-yard line. And that is where we'll have the first look of the second half at Daniel Gisano in this very quickly moving Lynn Classical offense. Yes. You know, and as fast as they're moving, it's just the opposite. As slow as this game is going. <laughs> Within the first two and a half minutes of this contest, Lynn Classical had already scored two touchdowns. This game kicking off at 7.30. The second half beginning just after 9 o'clock. Good defense. It's going to be a loss of a yard for the Rams offense. But you said it, very slow moving. It's a very long bus ride up here, especially for the late start on a Friday afternoon. And it'll be a very long bus, home, bus ride home for the boxers, regardless of outcome. Yeah, but you know what? If, if they win, that's okay. They'll be laughing, they'll be talking, they'll be rejoicing and you know, going over um, the game. But if they lose, oh, that's going to be a long drive home. Chisano able to gain a first down. Quintana. Out there blocking. But I mean, if you think about it, the boxers are going to get home tonight somewhere around midnight. Yeah, because they're going to go back to uh, the stadium, change into their street clothes. And, uh, I figure they're leaving here at 10 o'clock at the very earliest, more than likely closer to 10.30, 10.45. Four wide for the Rams. Jasano in the gun. He's going to keep it himself and get tripped up and get back to the original line of scrimmage. The Boxer's defense is stiffening up, which is great. That's what they need to do. Continue to keep them from moving the sticks long pass is going to fall five yards ahead of the intended receiver that was number 22 Maurice Sequeira 7-12 to go in the third quarter and it is a third and about nine to go for the Rams Rams once again going four wide. Calvin So to Gisano's right. And this is going to be defended excellently by number 34 of the boxers. Souffrant. Markendi Souffrant, who had the contact right at the perfect moment. Right after it hit the receiver's hands before he had it locked in. And that brings up a fourth and nine for the Rams. And they are lining up to punt it away to a Johnny Horn. Let's see that infamous running start towards the sideline. Kyle Durant. 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 That's a good kick. 
It's a good high kick. It'll fall at the 30 and bobbled in. The Rams fall on it. That is a huge mistake for a Johnny Horn. Number six was the Ram that recovered that. Esebio Quintana. And a Johnny Horn was running. He heard footsteps. Yeah. But he, he was he was thinking about running upfield before he collected the ball. Get under the ball, catch the ball, and then make your move. Worst comes to worst. I mean, signal a fair catch and just hold on to it. And be down at the, the 25. Instead, the Rams threatening. First and 10 on the... 23 yard line. Chisano back to pass. In trouble looking over the middle. He's got his man off the hands of Quintana and it falls incomplete. Hey, you're going to catch that. So Brockton was fortunate that he wasn't able to convert on that uh, reception. See if the boxers defense can once again hold strong. Second and 10 from the 23 yard line. 6.50 to go in the third quarter. Boxers are blitzing. Gisano has a hole. Gisano looking for the end zone. He's going to be brought down at the four yard line. Daniel Gisano showing his quick acceleration. Yeah, he, he just moved through that defensive line with ease. Cutting back and forth. First and goal from the five. Daniel Gisano hands off to number 23. Is wrapped up at the six. It'll be a loss of a yard. That is Sebio Quintana on the carry. Now second and goal from the six. Four wide, Calvin So to Gisano's left. The man in motion gets the end around handoff. He's wrapped up at the 11 yard line. It's a big loss of five. Lima, nice tackle. I mean, he met him right, right as he got the ball and broke away from the uh, quarterback. That's our and boy. Took him down quickly. Jeffrey Hill on that reception, number ten, who was now catches this one, and he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. What a defensive stand here for the boxers! It's going to be fourth and goal from the twelve-yard line, and they needed that. Or they need one more. Well, are they going to kick it? What are they going to do? The extra points have been perfect so far. Up in Durant is going out there. I lied. The extra points have been three for four so far. One of those blocked. Yes, one of those blocked. And Lynn Classical is going to call a timeout. 4.52 to go in the third. Fourth and goal from the 12-yard line. And Lynn Classical holding on to a slim one point lead. The status currently is 27 to 26. And Brockton needs to be ready for anything right here. Um, you know, they could very well do a fake. But the Brockton has just dominated in this, on this drive right here. Um, shutting them down every step of the way. They need to do that one more time if they go for it, which they are. Well, let's see if the boxers can come up with a big stand here on fourth and goal from the 12. What has already been a wild game is going to get that much crazier. Well, they should be ready for, you know, them trying to draw them off, line, off sides to try and give him a shorter kick. Four wide, two split to each side. Calvin So to Gisano's left. Quick snap, Gisano, high rainbow pass. He's got his man. 
He lands out of bounds. Touchdown oh Rams. He God. definitely landed out of bounds. He landed out of bounds. Number 22 on the reception, Maurice Sequeira. He went up. I don't know if, if his feet were, you know, it's, it's hot from this angle for us to get a clear view. But I know where his shoulders landed, his half, more than half of his body landed outside of the um, end zone. I mean, push comes to shove, he caught that ball over the end line. And then landed out of bounds. The extra point attempt is up and good. 34 to 26 now. The score an eight point lead for the Rams. Let's see if the boxers can answer. And the key to that drive for the Rams was the punt way back on the other side of the field that a Johnny Horn bobbled, fumbled, and the Rams had the clean recovery at the 23-yard line. The first sign of weakness from the young man, a Johnny Horn for the boxers. We saw him bobble one last week against Duxbury. Yeah, but he had a good game last week for all intents and purposes. Um, you know, it happens. Now he's just got to make up for it. He's made some, some um, good hits, some nice tackles. So let's regroup. We collect ourselves and uh, move forward. Oh. Now an onside kick attempt. Cleanly fielded by the boxers and then brought down pretty roughly. It was number 14. And that was Randy Jean Fossois. Was able to bring that, collect that ball. So good starting field position off of the Weird onside kick attempt. And that was, uh, that, that, that could benefit the boxes. Short field, short time. Four minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Trey Shula Hall and Amik Watterson lined up to our near sideline. Isaiah Laguerre, Navon Reed. And Devin Fortes lined up on the far side. Devante Medley in a clean backfield. A lot of discussion happening before this play happens. Medley in the gun. Handles the snap. Back to pass. Long over the middle. Looking for Reed. It's off the end of his fingertips. And it falls incomplete. Now, second and ten for the boxers from their own 44-yard line. Trips to the near sideline. Medley in a clean backfield. The snap. It's going to be a give to Isaiah Laguerre. Laguerre's go. got some room to run. Trying to turn the corner off the far side. He's got a first down and more. Isaiah Laguerre to the 30. Oh, no. Flags thrown in at the very end of that play. But for the moment, Isaiah Laguerre has a phenomenal long gain. Getting all the way down to about the 25-yard line. Flags thrown in around the 37. They came from a couple different directions. And it's going to go against the Brockton Boxers. That play's coming back. That's a huge mistake. 
error in judgment. And it probably was, you know, it, it definitely was behind the play, whatever the infraction was. For the moment, they're going to spot it at the 48 of Lynn Classical. Brockton's going to call a timeout. That would be a second and about two, which doesn't make any sense because it was second and ten. So we await word on what that call was and why it is eight yards from the line of scrimmage and more than 15 yards from the end of that play. Yeah. It's kind of weird. And it's not a spot foul because the flags were thrown way back at the 30-yard line of Lynn Classical. I've not seen the referee of, make the yeah, call there's a whole yet. Lot of talking going on. Ninety-nine trying to trying to get his get the the players and and the crowd riled up. Seventy-six on the sideline is quite the sight to see. Yeah, he's huge. He's listed at 230. He looks like, yeah, okay. like a big 230. <laughs> if he's 230, he's five foot six. If he's 230, then I'm lining up at 6'4 and 215. There's a lot of chatter on the field. There's been at least a couple of minutes between plays here. Fortes in... Laguerre, the wideouts to our near sideline. Medley in the gun. The snap. Medley back to pass. Scrambling to the outside. He's going to jump throw across his body. And Navon Reed got it on the far sideline. What a catch. Fantastic. And they're saying he was out of bounds. So they flip the call, rule him out of bounds. It's third and two. Lynn Classical was celebrating. I thought for a minute that they had intercepted that. Yeah, they were celebrating that he called him out of bounds. 4.17 to go in what has been a very long third quarter. It's been a long game. Jeez, I've heard the longest yard. This is the <laughs> longest game. Medley on the quarterback keeper. He's got a first down. Powered through. Nice and strong. We have reached the two-hour mark in this game, and we're still <laughs> not in the third quarter. For those of you who think I'm exaggerating, this game kicked off right about 7.30. It is now 9.25 Lynn Standard Time. Medley back to pass. He's going to keep it Run. himself to the outside. He's Run. got room. He's got a first down medley still on his feet, trying to get to the outside sideline, and he does. Pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line. A big first down for the Brockton Boxers offense with 3.44 to go in the third. And I've noticed a difference from last week to this week when running with the ball. He still runs and has the ball kind of out there a little bit, but he is protecting the ball a little bit better than he did last week. Because last week, you know, there was fumbles, there was interceptions, there was just turnover after turnover. And he's splitting out with the ball sooner than he was last week. He was kind of hanging in the pocket a little bit too long before deciding to split out. Yes. <laughs> and when he sees, sees a hole now and he sees all his uh, receivers defended, he will make a quicker decision and run. Now he's just going to work on getting that ball out a little bit sooner, especially on the handoffs. He's done better this second half. You know, he's done a couple of handoffs to Waterman, Watterson, and uh, he's let it go. Medley clean backfield, five wide, trips to the near side. It's a screen pass complete to Isaiah Laguerre. Laguerre at the 30, brought down. It's a gain of a yard. 
third and nine. Who's down? That is the senior wideout Isaiah Laguerre who is favoring his left leg, not putting any, any weight on it. And now he's going to go down. It's his left leg. Let's hope that's just a cramp because he is one of the co-captains of this boxer team. And by far one of the top wide receivers on this boxer team. If you've got any and the trainer's dealing with him. Injury timeout at 319. In the third quarter, it's 34 to 26. With Brockton chasing eight against the Lynn Classical Rams. A beautiful setting here at the Manning Bowl in Lynn, Massachusetts. Normally about an hour and a half away from home. In Friday afternoon traffic gets uh, close to what? Two hours? How long did it take you to get up here, Brian? Oh, let's see. I left about um, I left about quarter of four. And I got here at uh, just about six. So that's two hours and 15 minutes. No, actually, no, it was past six. No, yeah, it was around six. Yeah. Two hours, six. 15 minutes on the commute. Medley back to pass. Five wide. Medley's in trouble. He's going to get spun down and sacked back at the 41 yard line. And he almost turned over the ball. He looks like he's in pain. Get up. He's in a lot of pain, favoring his left side. It's fourth and long, about 18 for the boxers. Fourth and 19. Unsurmountable. McCarthy back to punt. They call from the Lynn Classical coaches that are to our left. Stay away from the kicker. Lynn Classical is going to call a timeout. Now it's going to be a false start, it looks like. Well, now it's going to be offsides. Offsides. All right, move him down. Move him back a little bit. You know, it would be fantastic right here. See, now, now there's a little bit of discussion. It's going to be... The call is against the Rams. Uh, it's going to bring up a fourth and about 14. I say kick it and try and get it within the um, red zone in the five-yard area. Uh, High kick isn't going to get any anywhere close, falling at the 20 fair catch call. Therefore... Marshfield. One fifty-three to go in the third quarter. Thirty-four to twenty-six. Brockton was putting together a nice drive before it came to a crashing halt. Yeah, and the the Rams really stopped the momentum because Brockton was driving. And uh they really need to put some some points up there on that drive. But now they need a, a stop, three and out. Jusano hands off to Calvin So He stood up at the line of scrimmage. I've been attempting to figure out what that call the, was. The, what the Lynn Classical marching band has been playing. Oh. I, I knew the song in the back of my head. I know the melody. It's the fight song of the University of Massachusetts Amherst Minutemen. Really? Okay. Of course, Broughton using the Notre Dame fight song as their touchdown song. Well, Broughton needs to come up with their own. And Lynn needs to come up with their own. Another good defensive stand there. It's a gain of about two yards. It'll be third and about... Well, a generous spot. It's going to be third and about five. I'm sure Vinnie McCreaney can write a score for our own fight song. Go 
Well, you've got the golden one written. Is is Rocky? <laughs> Third and five. Gisano in trouble. He's wrapped up, but he evades the tackle. Now splitting to the outside. He's got a first down for the Rams before getting out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Thirty seconds even to go in the third quarter, thirty four to twenty six. A timeout called by Marshfield, not Marshfield, Lynn Classical. There was some action going on down underneath the stands. And some of Lynn's finest are coming to... Uh, the cops coming into the stadium. Two cars the issue. hustling and two on the, the near side, too. Yeah. Well, we might have to find a replacement cameraman. Mike, the Postman Simmons, it looks like Lynn's finest is here for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> There's got to be something serious going on now. Yeah, Six a, cop cars have entered yeah, there was, there the was complex a, there was, here. There was a fight underneath the stands. There was a fight underneath the stands. I saw everybody coming up to the fence, looking down underneath. And now the kids I was are already down what to being nosy. Was. Yeah. Low snap, bobbled, handed off. It's going to be second and ten. Now I wonder if there was uh, some Lynn English kids here at Lynn Classical. Well, it wasn't Lynn Tech because their football game's on the road at Neshoba Valley. Okay. That is why we are not joined by the Emmy Award winning. Newbie right tell this is his home field now. Oh, this is true. This is true. End of the third quarter, thirty four to twenty six year score. Lynn classical on top of the Brockton boxers by one possession. It's an eight point lead. Actually, Newby just asked me, what's the score? 34-26, end of the third, Newby. I'm a big fan of this marching band because they're playing a song right now that starts with a very long tuba solo. You got to respect the big guys that hold, a, hold that 30-pound instrument in their, <laughs> on their shoulders. And they're right in front of us at about, about 20 yards, 25 yards. 12 minutes on the clock to decide the outcome of this game. It's a one possession game. Brockton has mounted quite the comeback and their offense has sputtered to start this second half. They were down by three touchdowns, I believe going into the second quarter. And then they were able to string together a couple of nice drives. Trips to the near side, one lone wide out to the far side. Jasano in the backfield, he's going to keep it himself and wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Third and ten. And that was a that was a good defensive stop right there. But that's just first play of this this drive. Let's see where we go from here. We need two, three more of those. Or two more. And then a nice little run back by Waterman. Generous spot brings up a third and eight. Chisano in the backfield, so to his left, trips to the far side. 
Fasano, screen pass complete to number 12. He's wrapped up at the 39 yard line. That's gonna bring up a fourth and about four to go. Avon almost deflected that ball. Almost knocked it down. So Durant's going to kick it. Nice kick. It's a Johnny Horn holding on to this one. Now brought down at the 40-yard line. Mike the Postman Simmons has reminded me that I called the Lynn Classical Rams the Marshfield Rams. <laughs> So decent field position, relatively, at the 40-yard line. Because but Brockton, uh, time is uh, not in their, their favor. They need to um, score quickly, defend, and then score again. Because butchering the players' names isn't enough. I have to get the name of the school wrong. There's a ram down in the backfield. And flags thrown after the fact. Way after the fact. And some of the um, players are escorting number nine, Manny Guerrero, away from the uh, action. So. Well, if they want to fight, the correct people are now on campus. Yeah. All you can do is you see fights in the NFL, little scuffles after some some rough contact. All you can do is laugh because these people are throwing punches and they're in full their gear. targets are in full pads. Yeah, you're throwing a punch and you're hurting your hand when you hit the helmet of the other player. Never made sense to me. It looks like just a cramp in the left leg. Let's uh, take this opportunity to give you some fantasy football etiquette advice. If the person with the number two waiver claim in the league claims Marquise Hollywood Brown at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday... Then the person with the top waiver claim waits till 10 o'clock at night on Tuesday to claim the same player. And somebody wakes up on Wednesday morning to a notification that the waiver claim was unsuccessful. Because somebody, not mentioning any names, Mike, claimed the same player and he happened to have the top waiver claim. That's Bush League. Don't do that. Okay. How can I put this? I don't care. <laughs> you have I, to. I, we got to well, we talk I, about something. I, this is okay. Well, you know what? A friend of mine wanted me to join his fantasy league, and I'm like, no. It's too much work, too much time. I don't have time for that. I'm in a pool with squares. My square doesn't move. My numbers change every week. I don't even have to watch the game to collect my money. There we go. Here's That's a nice run. Nice run. For Meek Watterson. All the way down to the 30-yard line of Lynn Classical. The clock stopped at 9.40. Oh, it's going again. And it continues to go. Hurry up offense. Trips to the far side. Watterson and Avon Reed to the near side. Medley in a clean backfield. It's coming to Navon. It's a mismatch in coverage. Yes. A big mismatch. Right over the top. Right over the top. And instead he's going to go underneath to Waterman. Watterson at the 21-yard line is where he's going to be 
Knocked down second and one. If he would have aired that out. He had Reed. Nate Reed was wide open. Went well. Let's get the measurements here. Navon Reed, 6'4", 210, was going against Eusebio Quintana, 6'1", no, 170. No, 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 no. Quintana's five feet. Well, that's what I have. I show five feet, 170. Oh, someone's off. Any way you look at it, there's a height differential. The run is going to go for no gain. Third and one. Let me see if I can look at another. Should we point. split the difference? Call them five, six? Okay. Sounds good to me. Three wideouts. Medley gives off to Watterson. He's got the first down. Brought down at about the 17-yard line. They're going to give a nice spot, the 16-yard line. So big first down for the boxers. Quintana somewhere between five and six feet. <laughs> and he's in mismatch again, this time looking for Navon Reed. It falls incomplete, but there's laundry all over the place. Near the line of scrimmage, it's going to be a false start against the Boxers. Yeah. There was a whole lot of um, defenders back there, too. Defensive back, safety, all that. So. I think we've. It was a crowded field. It's a false start called against the Boxers. The. Most interesting false start I've ever seen came in the Sunday Night Football game between the Patriots and the Steelers. In the third quarter, not Ben Roethlis this last game. No, th no, this last game. This last game. This last game. Roethlisberger hikes the ball. Everybody starts doing their thing, and the center is still frozen at the line of scrimmage with the ball at his feet. He never snapped the ball. Oh yeah, I remember that. And the referee on, on the mic said, false start, everyone except the center. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pass complete to Watterson brought down at the 23-yard line. Okay. Second is 16. Long way to go. Trips to the far side, all bunched up near the offensive line. Medley out to pass, looking across his body. He's tipped and knocked out of play. That'll bring a third and 16 for the boxers who have to score on this drive. Yes, they do have to score on this drive. Just over seven minutes remaining in the, in the game. And they can't get a first down without scoring. If they get down to the six yard line. Trips to the far side, five wide for the boxers. You got Navon Reed on the mismatch here on the near yes. sideline. You right gotta target him. Right over Medley's not even looking towards him. Scrambling out. Medley's gonna keep it himself. He's got room to run to the 15, the 10. And knocked out at the eight-yard line. It'll be close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot. It, the ref spotting it at about the seven and a half. And, and I think it's going to be it. about half a yard shy. Yeah, you got to go for it. It's a half a yard shot. Sending the jumbo set. Watterson right up the middle. Boxer sending in an extra offensive lineman. And they could just, you know... He could just keep it, Medley. Medley could just keep it, just drive. Before this play takes place, Mike the Postman Simmons would like me to correct myself. He placed the waiver claim at 10 p.m. on Monday, not last minute on Tuesday. Oh. 
Nobody cares. I'm just saying, everybody <laughs> that's listening to this broadcast should tweet at BCA Sports on the etiquette of fantasy football. <laughs> or at the Brockton channel, hashtag BCA Sports. Okay. Yeah. There is six minutes and 14 seconds left in the fourth quarter, 34 to 26. Lynn Classical holding on to an eight point lead. So who's on your team? I have, I have since do you have AB? Uh, you I do have not Antonio I do Brown? not have AB. I've got Drew Brees as my quarterback. Let's see, I'll pull up the roster right now. Drew Brees, Julian Edelman, Odell Beckham Jr., Latavius Murray, Leonard Fournette, Jared Cook, Brandon Cooks as my starters. My bench consists of Kyler Murray, Greg Olson, Adrian Peterson, uh, Sanders, the running back on Philly. Stills and Larry Fitzgerald. Decent squad. Jumbo set. Every man on the line. It's fourth and won the game. Potentially on the line right here. Two fullbacks behind Devontae Medley. And a really? false start called on the Brockton Boxers. The, the <laughs> lineman just <laughs> fell over. <laughs> That was, Who was Isaiah, that? That was Isaiah Le Laguerre on the far side of the line. He did the old play dead. <laughs> he was just leaning, and he just couldn't stop falling forward. A wow. face plant here at the Manning Bowl. <laughs> He's never going to hear the end of that one. <laughs> Someone's probably going to make a gif out of it. Does oh, have... man, he just... <laughs> that's the... F that's the... False start equivalent of what the Pittsburgh center did. Well, now it's a pass play. Could you be a running play, but, you know. Fourth and six. You got Navon Reed on the mismatch again to the near sideline. Over the top. Right over the top. Right away. Now. Over the middle. Caught and brought down first at the six-yard line. It should be enough for a first down. Yes. They called it, it a is. first down. Yes. That was Navon Reed on the reception. Who we've been saying this entire drive has had a mismatch. Mismatch. At and least half a foot taller than his defender, Quintana. And, and Navon cut across to the middle, but he could have just went to the end zone and just throw it up there for a jump ball. First and goal to give to Watterson. He's across the five to about the four-yard line. And now you want to waste a decent amount of time off the clock. To try to prevent Lynn Classical from getting or having enough time to get in, and that's a touchdown, boxers. No, they need to they need to, to score quickly because they need two touchdowns. They and they need two scores. I think you go for the for the overtime at this point. And I didn't say that word for those keeping score. So now you need the two point conversion, thirty four to thirty two. With five and a half to go. Okay. Here we go. We have now hit the two and a half hour mark on this game. And there's no commercial breaks here. Or well, bathroom breaks. <laughs> Mentally in the <laughs> shotgun. Trips to the far side. Low snap. They give... To Isaiah Laguerre, who is able to stay on his feet, and now he's brought down at the 10. There's an injured ram at the line of scrimmage. The two-point conversion is no good. And that's seven. So now Brockton's going to get a quick stop. Yeah. Orlando Concepcion is the one that's favoring his arm. I'm already getting yelled at because the O word was said on the broadcast. <laughs> but it's not feasible now because I no. don't see the boxers forcing a safety here. A safety, no. Back deep is Kyle Durant. As well as Sebio Quintana. So what would you do? 
Would you go for uh, onside or would you? No, you got to you got to kick, kick it deep long because if you score a stop. touchdown, that's that's game. Even a touchdown and, and a PAT is then a nine point lead. It's a short kick, fielded cleanly at the twenty five and knocked down at the thirty. Well, not knocked down, but forward progress stopped quite handily. In fact, by the boxers' special teams, number ten was in on that. Stop, Randy Jean Francois. So first and ten, just north of the 29-yard line, right at the 29-yard line. In fact, 5:25 to go for the Lynn Classical Rams. And number 18, the um, kick returner hurt his hand on that play. Angelo Castro. We've got whistles and a stoppage. It's going to be a false start against the Rams. So that's a big penalty. Now it's first and 15 with 5.23 to go. Gives the boxers that much more room to work with defensively for a big stop. And that puts the Rams at the 24-yard line. And it gives them uh, more space. Trips. Trips to the far side, one lone wide out. He's number 12 to the near side. That is Brendan Summers, who has had himself a nice game. Let's get a sack. Back him up. To give to right there. So, he's across the 30. Are you serious right They're now? They're trying to punch the ball, and he gets all the way to the first down marker. That was the. And instead of tackling. going for the stop, the boxers were trying to punch the ball out. On first and 15. And it's a 15-yard run. I mean, 15 yards, and you're going to let them just get that right, right up the, the Right up the gut. Calvin So. Nothing fancy about it. And he was hit in the backfield and then hit for the whole 15 yards. Screen pass complete to number 12, who's got himself a nice gain towards the 50, and that'll be another first down for the Rams. That is Brandon Summers. And the clock is not on their side. You know, they need a stop. They need three stops. Three stops, that's all you got to do. Trips to the far side. Here we go. Gisano in the gun. Quarterback keeper. He is hit and stopped close to another first down. He might be a yard shy. In a timeout called by Brockton. They have one remaining. And they had a chance to really, uh, you know, shut this down quickly. But it's not over yet. Still plenty of time. Four minutes, 17 seconds. But they need the ball back. And they need to keep the Rams off the board. It's been an entertaining game, though. Six touchdowns scored, three for each team in the first quarter. The difference was the extra point attempts. Lynn Classical had a four-point lead because of that. And then there was a 12 men on the field call on a boxer two-point attempt that they ultimately converted, making it 27 to 26. Brockton has scored a touchdown. The two-point conversion on that was not successful. And Lynn Classical scored a touchdown. The two-point conversion, or the extra point attempt was good. So that brings us to 34-32. Quarterback keeper, Gisano brought down. It'll be Shy of the line to gain. And Brockton just called a timeout. That is a bad timeout to take, as we heard from yes. Matty Cunningham, <laughs> assistant coach of the boxers. You got four oh eight to go, and that is Brockton's last timeout. Ideally, you'd like to save that till you're back on offense. 
Yeah. Two-minute yeah. warning does not exist in high school football. Raymond Bento being subbed out for Jose DePina, who was injured a little bit earlier in this game. Good to see him coming back in. He was injured a couple of times. But he's a tough kid. 6-2-250. That easily beats out Raymond Bento's 6-6-2-10. Expecting a run here is the boxer's offense, but trips to the far side. Jasano in the gun. The give to So. It's a quarterback keeper for Jasano. He's got a lot of room to run. The 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Rams. And I do not see. There's a flag thrown in well after the fact in the end zone. It's probably going to be on sportsmanlike against the boxers. And that's what you call a wrap. That's too big of a well, deficit. It's still, it's still in reach unless the Rams convert the extra point attempt. Well, this which is true. they've been pretty successful so far. There's been one block. Other than that, four of five on the night. They definitely, if they could uh, stop them here, score and score the two-point conversion, then we'd have that dreaded O word. Who's your player of the game? For the boxers, I think I got to give it to Amik Watterson, although Isaiah Laguerre has had a nice game, as has Navon Reed. Yes. Medley, definitely the most improved player over last week's performance. Yes. So this is interesting. The extra point attempt is going to... It's, Unsportsmanlike against the Rams, so the extra point attempt is going to come from about 34 yards out. Offsides against the boxers will move it five yards sooner. So that plays into that new rule. Can we yes. pull up the, the exact wording of the PAT attempt or field goal attempt from beyond 20 yards? Okay. All kicks that enter the end zone are immediately ruled touchback, including field goal attempts from beyond the 20 yard line. But so that was beyond the 20 yard line. This is yeah, but right at the 20 the yard zone. line. The extra point attempt is up and good. So the Lynn Classical crowd realizing that that's probably game 41 to 32. It's now a nine, nine point, point ball lead. game with 3.59 to go. It's not impossible, but highly unlikely. Yes. The way this game is played out, there was ebbs and flows all the way through it. I mean, Lynn Classico was dominant. The boxers stiffened up their defense and was able to get some, uh, some uh, momentum offensively. And it's just been going back and forth. But... Um, Brockton was able to cut the lead to one going into the, what, third quarter? And Lynn Classical has dominated the fourth quarter. As far as player of the game, we also have to acknowledge Trey Shula Hall, who has two of the four Brockton touchdowns. Bobbling this run back is Watterson. He laterals it. Right into the hands of the Rams, I believe. Yeah, what was that? So they've backed the boxes all the way back to the 11-yard line. I thought for a minute that the Rams had intercepted that ball. I wonder if that was... 
Excuse me. Uh, uh, it's coach not sanctioned. That late. Huh? We're only at the two and a half plus hour mark. <laughs> yeah, but I get up at five. It's a long day. Then you had a two plus hour commute here. Yes, I'll tell you. I am so glad to live in Brockton and work in Brockton. Pass to Navon Reed, complete. Get out of bounds. And he is not able to get out of bounds. Clock running with three and a half to go. Brockton with no timeouts to go. Navon Reed pleading his case that he did get out of play. But I'll tell you, uh, making that commute up here, it reminds me of when I worked at Blue Cross. And um, I don't ever want to have a job that I have to drive an hour or more every day. And then an hour or more home. Medley scrambling for the first down at the 31-yard line. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just thought about your job. <laughs> I've only got a 35-minute commute. It's not, not terrible at all. Medley over the middle, complete to Trey Shula Hall. Or rather, that's Devin Fortes. He's got another first down. Boxers have to move with a little bit of conviction now with 254 and counting. Left on the clock. Trips to the far side. Five wide for the boxers. Medley back to pass. He heaves it up looking for Reed. Incomplete and pleading yeah. his case for pass interference. If anything, that was offensive pass interference. But you know what? He, he has a right to be able to go for the ball. And the defender was impeding his path. So... It very well could have been defensive pass interference, even though the uh, defender was not the aggressor. Mike the Postman Simmons would like to tell us that he's got a six-minute commute from the east side of Brockton to downtown. I have an eight-minute commute from the west side of Brockton to the east side of Brockton. Trips to the near side. Medley in trouble. He's going to keep it himself and get wrapped up around the neck across the 50. They're going to mark him right at the 50. It'll be second and about four with two and a half and counting. Hurry up offense. Trips to the near side. Two wideouts to the far side. Clean backfield. Medley to pass. He's got his man, Amik Watterson. He's got to get out of bounds. He cuts back towards the middle. Still spinning with it all the way down to the 21. All the way down to the 13 to the 12 yard line it looks like for a meek watterson clock running with 207 they'll momentarily stop it for the first down markers to get all the way up field that was a fantastic you know reception and um, run after the catch by watterson boxers offense ready to go the first down markers are not medley to the outside and it falls incomplete, stopping the clock with 2.03 to go. And, and a late flag thrown in. The infraction is on the Rams. On sportsmanlike against the Lynn Classical Rams. So it should be uh, that should first be and goal. First and goal. Yeah. Yeah, it would be half the distance would be at about the seven yard line. And it's a free first down. Yeah, so it's first and goal. Yeah, because the uh the sticks are off to the side. They're no longer using them. The conference of officials to determine where the ball goes. It'll be spotted. At the five-yard line. So first and goal to go for Brockton. Got a score and then uh, an onside kick. Three wide outs. Isaiah Laguerre and Navon Reed to the near side. Uh, Devin Fortes and Navon Reed to the near side. The snap, the give to Amik Watterson, and he's in for a boxer touchdown. 
That was a nice drive. That was a nice drive by the boxers. They were consistent. The handoff Moving went to ball. Isaiah Laguerre, excuse me. Boxer's so. going for two here. Not that it Makes really difference. matters at this point. That would put him within one. The snap they give to Watterson and he's able to convert. With ease. 41 to 40 the score, 157 to go in the fourth quarter and Brockton has to pull a rabbit out of their hat. Execute the onside kick and pull a rabbit out of their hat. <laughs> <laughs> with the stoppage we want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from the beautiful Manning Bowl here in Lynn, Massachusetts <coughs> excuse me on camera the one, the only Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton that's a two plus hour commute for the Postman both yes. ways and the single man crew up top, we've got BMAD Brian Madden, also a two plus hour commute. And myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Wasn't bad for me. I came from Lowell. It was about an hour 15. We want to thank you for watching this presentation of BCA Sports, Brockton Boxer Football. It's been. Quite an entertaining game here up in Lynn. Yeah, nice, nice football weather too. It's it's brisk, but it's not cold. And at some point overnight, it's going to hit forty degrees. Yeah, allegedly. That's fine. I'll be in my bed, under my covers, comfortable. Next week, the boxers play at Marciano Stadium against the Natick. High school Red Hawks. The onside it, kick and it. Brockton's got it. What was the terminology? No, Rabbit out of their hat. No, it did not it. travel for no. it did not travel ten yards. They don't have it. Brockton was celebrating like they had it. They There's a discussion on the far side between close officials. To having it. it looked like they had a chance to have it. The Rams have it. It's at the 49-yard line of the Rams. And the Rams can uh, pretty much run out the clock. They need one first down. Four wideouts. Gisano in the backfield. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get stacked up flags thrown in at yeah. the line of scrimmage. Face mask. They could call anything here. They came in from all directions. No, Three flags on the mask. play. I saw it from here. I didn't see who, who committed the infraction, but I saw the face mask. I saw a bunch of holding. It's going to go against Brockton. So there's the first down, 146 to go. We might still need one more first down for the Rams to close this one out. A very high scoring game, 81 points scored to this point between yeah. these two teams, only a one point difference. Gisano in the gun. Trips to the far side. Snap to give to Calvin So. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and the boxers don't have a timeout to stop the clock here with 125. Whistles blow, and the clock is stopped. Why? Oh, they did have a timeout. They had one remaining. 
The scoreboard read zero left. But Brock didn't able to call a timeout. Well, it was a hot fought battle by the boxes in hostile territory up here in Lynn. But the, um, the Rams was able to uh, hold off the onslaught of the boxes offense. And, uh, and the problem comes down to the missed extra points. The missed extra Ultimately, points, yes. Yes. If you even convert one of those, we're talking a whole different ball game. This is true. And the slow start to the second half. You could look back at the turnover on the punt return by Johnny Horn that led to a Rams touchdown. Two wideouts split to each side, 125 on the clock. They give to Calvin So. He's got a first down, and he's going to find the house. And that's game, a Rams touchdown with 117 to go. Flags thrown in well after the fact. And that's unfortunate to, uh, you know, they allow them to just score with just over a minute remaining in the game. But it all comes full circle because um, at the beginning of the game, they were able to score two touchdowns. In the within, first two within, and a half minutes. Yeah, w within less than three minutes. They're a formidable opponent, these uh, Lynn Rams. The extra point attempt is up, and it's good. Their kicker is good. Well, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's highly unlikely. The boxers have 116 to get down the field and score a touchdown and a two-point conversion. <laughs> <laughs> So you say there's a chance. So I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Well, that, that is, you know, literally there is an opportunity. There is a chance. This cumulative scoring sheet is going to need quite a bit of updating. Amik Watterson now with five touchdowns on the season. Trey Shula Hall scoring his first two. And Isaiah Laguerre has added his first marker of the year. Yes. The unsportsmanlike against the boxers at the end of that last play. The kickoff coming from the Brockton 45-yard line. It's a squib kick. And it's going to be handled, run to the outside, and brought down rather hard at the 25-yard line. So I and say that Lynn Clasco is going to rise in the in the standings after this um, beating of the boxes. And then we'll go from there. We'll see where we are next week. And what a rebound for Lynn Classical after getting blown out 42-12 to against Catholic Memorial last week. Yes. You, you come into your home field and put up 48 points. And as Mike the Postman Simmons has just alerted us, it's not over yet. Devontae Medley heaving it up. He catches and it. And he got it at the 42-yard line. Is that Navon Reed on the far side? It is. Or is Isaiah Laguerre no, that on was the far Laguerre. side? That was Laguerre. Number 16. So it's a first and 10 from the 42-yard line. I just need to do that two more times. And Lynn putting a safety back deep at their own 15-yard line. And another one at the 25-yard line. 
The end around give to Amik Watterson. Trying to pick up a lead blocker. He is stopped at the 26 and a flag and a thrown. That's, flag. that's good because it stops the clock with 38 seconds so yes. long as it's on the Rams. 38 or 18? Oh, that, t that pole is in my way. Looks like 18 from here, but it's 38. And they counted it off against the boxes. So that's not good. But first and 10 from the 36. Or it's another weird call because it was just a first and 10. Now it's a first and four. But the penalty against the boxers. Five wide, Medley in the backfield. Back to pass. He's going to keep it himself, waiting quite a bit to get out. He's got the first down and out of bounds with 24 seconds to go. And down to can, the 27. And he can reach the end zone, so... Navon, telling you, that's the play. Navon in the corner of the end zone. Let him go up and get it. What an entertaining finish this one's shaping up to be. Yes. As I said, it was an entertaining game. Win, lose, or draw. It's been an entertaining game. Medley back to pass. He's going to keep it himself across the 25 to the 20 and jumping out right at the 20 with 15 to go now. First down... And that was heads up play by um, Medley. Instruct his blocker to get out and stay ahead of him. And um, enable him to pick up an extra five or six yards. Back to five wide for the boxers. First and ten from the 20. Medley back to pass. Looking for... Amik Watterson down at the two. Yeah, and he catch. And they, they get a hurry because I don't think he got out no, of bounds. They got seven bounds. seconds on the clock. Spike and it, spike they, it. They start the clock. Spike it. You got to hurry up. And he does spike it with 3.7 to go. It's now a second and goal from the three. <laughs> so you say there's a chance. <laughs> I said there's a chance a couple of minutes ago. Everybody thought I was crazy. I didn't think you were crazy. I just... I just it's laugh. not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. That means that there's at least a, a chance. Slim possibility. But they're um you know. Well this is the last play of the game, because there's only three point seven yeah. seconds on the clock. Yeah. I'd honestly I'd give it to Omik Waterson right to run up it, the gut. Right up the gut. Right up the gut. The boxers line up three wide. Two running backs surrounding Devontae Medley. He's going to keep it himself, looking for a hole. He's going to be stopped short. just short of the just goal line. Short. His time expires. It doesn't get any closer than that. And he is going to be about six inches short of the goal line. What a game. Lynn Classical is going to take a defensive stand right at the goal line and come up with the victory. The final score is going to be 48 to 40, and what a finish. Yeah, what a game. What a game. It was um, entertaining start to finish. Uh, you know, the outcome is not what, what anyone from Brockton wanted to see. but um, And on that last play, you thought Devontae Medley had the opportunity for a shovel pass. I, I think it was either Navon Reed or Amik Watterson that was open in the goal line a yard or two deep. And he decided to keep it himself stopped about six inches short. Yes. But a very entertaining game. Well, we'll see what happens next week. Move forward. This one's it's going to be a long ride home. But a lot of positives to talk about in practice. Yes. Still got some things to work on. And the final score, 48-40. to 40. Brian, your players of the game. Ooh, my players of the game. Uh, let's see. i got all my stuff put away now. I'd have to say um, 
Lynn Classical. You got to go with um, Gisnome. Gisnomo. No, no. Gisano. 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 <laughs> The he senior pre- quarterback of the Lynn he, Classical Rams. He was outstanding. He was good today. Um, Kyle Durant was was very doing good. it all. He was doing it all. Uh, Sakura played well. I mean, it, it was a uh, a lot of lot of entertaining games. A lot of lot of people did well today. Brockton just not enough. I mean, you had Navon Reed. He played outstanding. Watterson, fantastic. Medley was good. So. Regroup, recalibrate, and let's get ready for Natick. Well, it's Natick High School. The Red Hawks coming to Marciano Stadium next week, a 5 o'clock kickoff for that one as the boxers look to get back in the win column. 48-40, to your final score from Manning Field in Lynn, Massachusetts. The Lynn Classical Rams getting the one-touchdown victory at the last possible minute. Devontae Medley was stopped about six inches short of the goal line that would have given the boxers the opportunity to tie. Unsuccessful as time expired. Again, the final score, 48-40 to 40 for our cameraman, cameraman, excuse me, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, B-Mad Brian Madden, myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We will see you next game. <laughs>